ribbed. It's got a ribbed head for her pleasure. It's a queef. Shut up! You can introduce me though. You can just say Alphonse Alexander Lanza the Third if you don't mind. And then I'll say, but you can call me Fonzie, all right? Okay. Alphonse Alexander the Third is a DJ and producer from Toronto, Canada. He is best known as one fourth of House Act as Arian Third, but he also makes his own solo productions, runs the label Idle Hans, and plays in a band called The Cruelty Party. We visited Alphonse in his secret lair in Parkdale a few weeks before Azari and Third announced their breakup. He gave us a look around his studio and his mind. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? What's happening? Hey there. Hi. <laughs> and this is your studio? So or this is, I like to be in a maze so that people can't bother me. And I don't bother people, you know what I mean? This is where we film that Hungry for the Power where the guy gets his face eaten. Uh. Welcome to the Park Dalian. This is where the magic's been happening for the past 10 years. Come rain or shine outside, we don't know what time of the, the day or night it is in here. Everyone loves to show off their 303s when they're doing studio videos. Gotta have one of those bad boys. When I'm not busy making techno, I'm making real music, you know? With real instruments. Yeah, this is some, uh, this is some great stuff. These are like uh, the kind of microphones people have wet dreams about if you're like a gear slut nerd. U47s, that, that just creams your voice up like just whipping up butter. This has been here since 2003 and I've been hiding up in here. They've sold it to condo developers, so my days here are numbered, so this is kind of a last hurrah. I'm known to be a cruel taskmaster. Yeah, when I'm producing, you have to have thick skin, man, because I'm a cruel taskmaster. You know, I beat that fucking whip for 16 hours if that's what it takes. I do not doubt that. This thing was my labor of love. I could have put a down payment on a house or build this. Yeah, I'll just give you a quick little taste of the strangeness that comes out of this bad boy. This board has some history. This board was used to mix uh, a whole bunch of David Cronenberg movies like Naked Lunch and Crash and stuff from the uh, film company where I bought it from. <laughs> There's a company from Texas actually called Synthesizers.com. And if you ever heard of Moog, the famous synthesizer, they started out with big modular units and Synthesizers.com has cloned them and they sold me the cabinets, these kind of units. See, it gets pretty addictive. You just go on forever with this stuff. How often do you use it? I use it pretty much for every production I do, even quite often, even when I'm doing hip hop or rock and roll for producing other art. The artist will find a layer somehow to use, you know. But for the techno stuff, it's all over everything now since I got it. How did you meet the rest of Azari? Cedric, starving at full. He came in here with a group called Mansion. He was the singer. It was more like a sample Della kind of thing. It wasn't really a song, it was kind of vocal loops and stuff. And I'm like, wow, you got a great voice. It shouldn't be contained to just kind of sing and play out vocal loops, you know? So let's do something together. I got his number. I think the producers were horrified that I was literally saying, you can come work with me now, <laughs> you know, right in front of them, right? And they're paying my time to record them, right? <laughs> Fritz had come to me because he was working on some solo material. He was working with Nelly Furtado on her Nell Star label at the time with Fritz Helder and the Phantoms. So I was doing some production work for him. So they were the two singers, discussed maybe doing something together. And at the same time, late 2008, I met Dynamo Azari and we decided to go in and fiddle around in the studio. We came up with our song Manhooker, was the first thing we ever made. And that kind of laid a blueprint of like an artier, kind of darker sound, you know. And I guess our common ground was that kind of Detroit techno house sound. But uh, I mean, we're pretty risque. Like our show is noisy, it gets punky. Did you guys tour with Madonna? <clears throat> no, we didn't. That came out as, uh, I think as Avicii looks like Azari, kind of, you know, <laughs> the Roman numerals. Yeah, That's, uh, I, I remember believe reading Someone that. from Madonna's camp reached out and said, hey, would you guys be interested in opening for Madonna on her Canadian leg of a tour? And we were like, yeah. Okay, we'll get back to you. They never got back to us, and before we knew it, it was just all over the press. Yeah, Someone I saw just it. got a hold of that and they wanted to talk about it, even though it was not even close to being official. But that was so much press. I mean, just to this day, you're still asking. People yeah. are always asking that. I just remember that now. Because it was the craziest PR we've ever had. <laughs> Electronic music still has, uh, I think a lot of its roots were in art, you know, to be able to create a more of arty sound than was capable with normal instruments, right? 
My label is all about experimentation and taking stuff that no other label would touch. Even if that means it alienates certain people or it's yeah. hard to digest, it's still challenging. And what's your label called? Idle Hans. For better or for worse, maybe one day I'll grow out of it, but I'm into that grinding, dark negativity stuff, you know? And like flirting with disaster, flirting with chaos, things kind of falling apart at the seams, kind of the way our society is. <laughs> I don't find Deep House is a good representation of the angst that I still have. Mm -hmm. You're still in that Hamilton vibe. I'll never outgrow the Hamilton vibe. That's imprinted on me, that darkness. It's growing up in a David Lynch movie. You know those small towns that are, he's always big about? And that evil that lurks in the shadows and kind of possesses people? Hamilton's full of that. I mean, we used to find dead, crucified animals in the bush, because I guess some heavy metal Satanists had been there just before us. Hamilton's full of that kind of stuff. It's an occultist town. And when did you move here? I moved here at New Year's Eve of 2000. Fled, fled Hamilton. Do you feel like you're gonna stay in Toronto forever? I almost moved to LA about a year, year and a half ago. I had some great offers to do production stuff. Things started to pick up for me, and all of a sudden I realized, don't move. Toronto's great, Toronto's perfect. You can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere. Maybe there's a time when that wasn't true, where you actually had to leave the way peaches and feists, you know what I mean? But I believe that this, this is a great metropolis like any other in the world, and if you're doing good things, it's a good infrastructure here now. I wanna be a part of this city and just keep building it. Whether I'm engineering, mixing, producing, writing, or directing people, it's just something I always wanna be involved with, not just my own stuff, but as much of the other art that comes out of here as possible. You know?